Uh, yeah, thanks a lot uh, also to the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to present our recent results. Um, yeah, so this uh, talk will be about um, equivalence between catalytic and asymptotic entanglement theory. And uh, l let me first give you an uh, outline of the talk. So we will uh, first uh, start with uh, catalytic and asymptotic manipulations of quantum states. Then we will uh, talk about approximate entanglement catalysis. We will then go on and talk about catalysis reducibility equivalence and uh, discuss uh, some applications of our results. Um, so uh, originally uh, we know catalysis from, from chemistry where catalysis is a process for increasing the rate of a chemical, of a chemical reaction. And uh, in, so in chemistry, a catalyst is a substance that remains unchanged in the procedure. So here, uh, yeah, you, you might have a chemical reaction where uh, you, you might need some activation energy um, uh, to, to start it. And uh, well, by adding this catalyst, ideally, you would uh, reduce the activation energy uh, and you could, ideally, you would like to do it in such a way that the catalyst it remains unchanged, so you effectively that means that you can reuse the catalyst. In, yeah, infinitely many times in theory. Um, so in um, well, what we will talk about is uh, in the following is not uh, it will not be about chemical reactions, but about entanglement. But conceptually, uh, the the idea of catalysis is very similar. So entanglement catalysis is a process for achieving entangled state transformations that are not possible without the catalysis. And a quantum catalyst is a quantum system that remains unchanged in the procedure, or to be more precise, it, uh, the quantum catalyst is, in the end of the procedure, is the same as in the beginning. So it might change on the way, but in the end it should be returned in the same quantum state. Uh, let us be a bit more specific. So uh, we uh, imagine we have uh, like two distant parties, Alice and Bob, and uh, they share some entangled state. And now they, they would like to uh, obtain another state phi. And the important thing is that uh, they can only use local operations and classical communication for that. Of course, we, we, know, uh, we know the conditions uh, for uh, such a transformation. Uh, like from uh, Nielsen's majorization theorem. Uh, but what is important in this talk is that there are some transformations which are, uh, which are en enabled if you add another pair of particles. So you add another pair of entangled particles that is, uh, which are in a state mu here. And by this additional pair of particles enables the transformation of psi tensor mu into phi tensor mu. Although psi into phi was not, uh, the transformation of psi into phi was not possible via local operations and classical communication alone. So it is fair to say that this, uh, uh, this quantum system here in the state mu is, is a quantum catalyst. So this is uh, uh, exactly what's the definition of a catalyst in this context. Um, <clears throat> And uh, so, okay, uh, th this was a brief repetition of, of, of entanglement catalysis. Now, uh, let, us, um, let us briefly remind ourselves what asymptotic manipulations of quantum states are about. Um, so uh, here we have um, many copies of, a, of an entangled quantum state here denoted by rho. So Alice and Bob share many copies of rho and they perform local operations and classical communication with the goal of obtaining some other quantum state here, again, shared by Alice and Bob. In this picture, uh, this target state is the singlet, but in general, you might consider like transformations of rho into sigma, right? So the, this state doesn't have to be a singlet in general. You can think about some other bipartite quantum state, and you can define asymptotic transformation rates. So the optimal rates of converting a state into another state in this setting. So you could write like this. So essentially take infimum over the trace norm of lambda LOCC. So this is a infimum over all LOCC protocols of n copies of rho um, and r n copies of sigma. 
and then you, you let the limit uh, of n go into infinity, so you want this to be zero, essentially. And you are looking for the largest r here for the largest rate, such that this, is, uh, this limit is zero. And um, yeah, so this is kind of the, the standard asymptotic transformation rate for, uh, for entangled states. And um, what we know so far, we understand this asymptotic transformation rates uh, in, in various settings. For example, we understand them for bipartite pure states. So we, we know what's the optimal protocol. We know what's the optimal rate for the bipartite pure state setting. Uh, also certain classes of noisy states and uh, multipartite states. But, but for those, uh, the, the problem is much more difficult as you might imagine. Um, So uh, the main question that uh, my re the rest of the talk will be about is the following. Is there a connection between asymptotic and catalytic transformations of entangled states? So how are they connected and can we, can we link one to another? Um, yeah, and for, to answer this question, let us uh, now talk about approximate ent entanglement catalysis. So approximate entanglement catalysis is a, is a more recent development. Um, let's say it's a relaxation of the, of the entanglement catalysis that we discussed a uh, few minutes ago. So in, uh, here, imagine that we have a system S. So you, you, you should imagine S to be a bipartite system. So S is a system that is like shared by Alice and Bob. And there is another catalyst system that is also bipartite. No? So we start out in a state rho and a catalyst state and perform an LOCC protocol uh, with respect to the LOC protocol is with respect to the Alice and Bob bipartition. And um, well, our protocol uh, does not, so basically the result of the protocol is some state here, which, uh, uh, and the S system is not exactly sigma, but what, what you want to do is to bring it arbitrary close to sigma. So, so that in the limit, you are, in a certain limit, you are essentially obtaining the state sigma uh, with arbitrary small trace distance. We will show a rigorous definition in a moment. Uh, yeah, and as you have seen in, uh, here in this small animation, you have seen that the, there are correlations. So this catalyst system was correlated with uh, your system S, but the, uh, these correlations, uh, so we would like these correlations to disappear in the limit. So in, the, in a certain limit, the, uh, we, we would like them to, the catalyst and the primary system to decouple. And this is what, what um, in, uh, in simple words, this is what, uh, what we call approximate catalysis, which is a relaxation of the, of the uh, strict catalysis that we discussed before. Uh, okay, and if you if you would like to, to have a fully rigorous mathematical definition of that uh, approximate catalysis, so rho can uh, be transformed into sigma with approximate catalysis if uh, for any epsilon there is an LOCC protocol lambda and a catalyst state tau, so that lambda uh, acting on rho tensor tau, uh, well, is basically in trace norm very close to sigma tensor tau. Uh, so for uh, so for any epsilon, this trace norm can be made arbitrarily small, smaller than epsilon, and additionally, we require that the catalyst system. So if you take this uh, this post uh, LOCC state and trace out the primary system A B, then uh, your the catalyst state is unchanged. So th these two conditions define uh, approximate catalyst. And what is nice about this, uh, this uh, setting is that it allows us, in, in certain setups, it allows us for, uh, to solve the problem completely. For example, if you have bipartite pure states, so Alice and Bob share a pure state psi, and th they would like to get a pure state phi, then within this setting, we know exactly necessary and sufficient conditions for the transformation. And they are given by entanglement entropy. So, uh, if the entanglement entropy of psi is bigger than the entanglement entropy of phi, then the condition is possible, uh, the transformation is possible, and this is a necessary and sufficient condition. And what is also important uh, is that uh, for those who, um, for the experts on catalysis, there is a phenomenon called embezzling. So 
uh, in, in certain settings, you can embezzle uh, entanglement in by taking a, by by changing the catalyst a little bit. So because of this condition number two, we uh, there is no embezzling here because um, well because we cannot we're not allowed to change the state of the catalyst. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, our just to recall our main question of this talk is. Um, is there a connection between catalysis and, uh, and asymptotic setting? Or more, quant uh, more quantitatively, is asymptotic reducibility equivalent to transformations with approximate catalysis? So what, what is uh, asymptotic reducibility? Asymptotic reducibility means that uh, the uh, rho is asymptotically convertible into sigma with rate one, right? So then, if this is the case, we say that rho is reducible asymptotically reducible into sigma. So uh, the, tran the asymptotic transformation is possible with rate one. And we, we ask, is this equivalent to a catalytic, to a approximate catalytic transformation from rho into sigma? Um, yeah, so this is, uh, this is the precise formulation of the main question. And what we know so far is that, um, a reducibility, so asymptotic reducibility implies a catalytic, uh, an approximate catalytic transformation. So this is this was sh shown in uh, in a recent series of uh, of papers um, um, that uh, well that were originally uh, kind of uh, uh, formulated in quantum thermodynamics, but uh, have been extended also to, uh, to 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 analyze entanglement, and um, so. The, the open problem is exactly the other direction, or uh, you might also, the, the, what is open is if approximate catalysis can overcome the limitations of asymptotic state manipulations. So essentially we don't know yet if uh, s uh, the existence of such a transition also implies asymptotic reducibility or whether this is more powerful. So it could be that there is a catalytic transition between the from rho into sigma so that uh, 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 yeah, which are not reducible into each other uh, without the catalyst. Um, yeah, okay. Um, let me now sh um, show you uh, a, re um, a partial resolution of that problem, of that open problem. Um, well, partial resolution because it, it, it uh, well, it, it uh, relies on specific assumptions that I will also uh, tell you in a moment. Um, so, okay. Um, and for this, we need to relax the definition of catalysis even more. So you remember that we relax catalysis from strict transformations to approximate transformations. But for, for what we're going to do, this is not enough. We need to relax it even further. And this relaxation is called correlated catalysis. So we say that the row um, can be converted into sigma in this setting, if for any epsilon there is lambda, uh, LOC protocol lambda and catalyst such that this holds. So here the first condition is, is uh, important. So here uh, this is um, basically lambda, the LOC protocol is applied onto uh, rho and tau. So tau is the catalyst. And we want that if we trace out the A prime B prime part, so the catalyst, if we trace it out, then uh, we get the, uh, the state sigma with arbitrary precision. So because we want this to be true for any epsilon. Yeah? And the second condition is the same as before. The second condition just means that the catalyst is unchanged. And, uh, this, uh, and this, uh, this, is a further, this is a relaxation which you immediately, oh, which you immediately realize, sorry, some, something went wrong here. Uh, this, is a uh, this is a relaxation of approximate catalysis, and you realize it just by recalling what is the definition of approximate catalysis uh, that we, we had it already here uh, a few slides ago. So uh, approximate catalysis was that uh, the, like, the system AB and the catalyst uh, after the LOC protocol are close to sigma tensor tau. So sigma is the state that you want to have, your target state. Yeah. So you, uh, let's compare these two equations. You see that in this equation, a, a, a prime, b prime part is traced out. So essentially here, you do not really require that you are close to a tensor product state. Yeah. You, you don't care if your 
a system and catalyst are correlated or not. You just want the system to be in the state sigma, but you don't care whether uh, it's correlated and how much the correlations are. So that's why this is called correlated catalysis. So the, this, uh, this procedure can, uh, can, can lead to correlations between the system and the catalyst. Um, yeah, so basically, yeah, pictorially, so you start with the row tensor tau and then you go into sigma tensor, uh, I mean, you don't go into sigma tensor tau, but you go into something that where the subsystem is sigma and the other subsystem is tau, <laughs> but, but uh, they are correlated. Um, and similarly, we can relax asymptotic state transformations in a very similar way, namely, uh, we, uh, well, we, we now uh, consider transformations where many copies of rho are converted into a, into a state where each of the subsystems is sigma. So we, we don't uh, require any more at the moment. We don't require any longer that these sigmas are, are uncorrelated, but we, we allow them to, to have correlations between each other. We just want that the subsystems are, are sigma. Or, uh, well, if you want a more precise definition, um, so this is what we call marginal reducibility. So we say that rho is reducible into sigma in the setting if for any epsilon and delta, there is an LOCC protocol and integers m and n such that these conditions hold for all i smaller than m. Okay, so this is uh, um, basically here, uh, the LOC protocol is uh, applied onto n copies of rho and th this is what is this mu m. So mu m is, a, is an m particle, uh, m, uh, well, it's, it's kind of an m particle uh, state now. Uh, and each, uh, so this mu i is like the ith reduction. So the ith subsystem of mu m, each of this ith subsystems is close to sigma, e epsilon close. And also this m over n, so m is like how many, how many subsystems you have here in the state, m over n is, um, well, is bigger than one minus delta. So essentially that means that m, m over n can be made arbitrary close to one, right? Because you want these conditions to be true for all epsilon and delta, no? So, um, well, this is, this is the fully mathematical definition of this marginal reducibility. And uh, okay, this, uh, like these correlations between the final states here, they, uh, they uh, well, uh, they, they might be a little bit problematic, but uh, the, well, this setting is still meaningful if you think about it as a sigma being, being used by, by different parties independently. So if each of these copies, I mean, okay, these are not really copies, but if each of the subsystems is given to a different, uh, different set of parties and they never, they never interact with each other across these cuts here, then, uh, then it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a meaningful, it's a meaningful problem to study. Um, and okay, so with, with this uh, definitions, I can now give you uh, the first result of, of that article. And the, the result goes like this. For any pair of distillable states, rho and sigma, marginal reducibility and correlated catalysis are fully equivalent. So that means that if, you, uh, if there is a catalytic transformation from rho into sigma, then there is also an asymptotic protocol converting rho uh, into sigma, I mean, in this marginal asymptotic way, and the other direction also. If there is an asymptotic protocol converting rho into sigma, then there is also a catalytic protocol doing, doing the same transition. And let me sketch, uh, let me give you a brief uh, sketch of the proof. Um, so if, uh, 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 well, we recall that the theorem is only, uh, the theorem only applies for to distillable states. So let's assume rho is distillable, then it is possible to approximate the state of the catalyst from k copies of rho for large enough k. So it's not, this is not very difficult to see, so what you do is essentially, um, yeah, you, you take k uh, large enough so that you can distill uh, singlets from it, like and enough singlets from, from it with enough uh, fidelity so that you can 
form the state tau with, with uh, a desired fidelity. So for any desired fidelity, there, there is a K that, that achieves this. And the nice thing here is that you need, uh, the catalyst needs to only to be obtained only once. So you don't need to have a rate of catalysts, you just need to have the catalyst only once with a very good fidelity. And um, so once you have done this, so that means that K is essentially a fixed number. It doesn't contribute to the rates. So once you have done this, um, you, um, you can design a, an asymptotic protocol for marginal reducibility by allocating K copies of rho for approximating the catalyst. So you, you have a large num number, you start out with a large number of copies of rho, right? And you just take a constant number of them to form the catalyst and you use this catalyst then to convert the remaining copies of rho into sigma. And because this k is a constant number, it doesn't contribute to the rate, so you, if you work out the maths, you see that, uh, that it gives you exactly the, uh, the, uh, the reducibility. So this, these two points prove that if there is a catalytic protocol from rho to sigma, then there is also an asymptotic protocol. And uh, the, uh, we now need to prove the other direction. The other direction is uh, if there is an asymptotic protocol, there is also a catalytic protocol. But uh, this uh, second direction is much more easier, uh, provided that you are, one is familiar with this uh, with these tools here. So basically, uh, this can be proven, um, uh, yeah, with with the, with this with the, the tool with the, like a, a state construction that goes back to a paper of Duan should have cited it here I forgot yeah, yeah basically a construction there is a constructive protocol that uh, can uh, be used to convert an asymptotic protocol into a catalytic one so yeah and with this we we have the we have it uh, proven um, okay um, let me now briefly mention some applications. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Basically, uh, catalysis. Uh, oh, two minutes or one minute? It's over. Uh, it's actually over, but oh, okay. Okay, then uh, I'll just go directly to the summary. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so basically, correlated catalysis and marginal reducibility are fully equivalent for distillable states. Um, also, uh, these applications that I had to skip uh, imply that catalysis cannot increase the, sing uh, the asymptotic singlet distillation rate. So you cannot distill more singlets at a better rate by adding catalysis. Uh, PPT and tangled states also cannot be distilled into singlets using catalysis. This was proved in, when in a different work with uh, uh, with Bartos and Ludovico here. Uh, the results are also applicable to multi part settings. And for two qubits, uh, you can make these statements a bit stronger. So catalysis and marginal reducibility are fully equivalent. Uh, you don't need to assume uh, distillability here. And uh, catalysis uh, cannot increase the single distillation rate. And the open problem is uh, that it's still open. Can catalysis overcome the limitations of asymptotic state manipulations in the setting where you don't assume uh, this uh, reducibility, but you really uh, assume uh, uncorrelated systems? So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have time for one or two short questions. Uh, you have to use the microphone. Um, Thank you for the nice talk. So, so my question is very simple. So, how about so restrict the amount of correlation between the co correlated catalysts and also marginal reusability in such a situation? They are also equivalent or something equivalent? Uh, you you mean that we don't ask the correlations to be uh, close to zero, but we restrict them to uh, some constant amount? Yes. Uh, we didn't think about that. Um, yeah, then I mean, uh, you could ask, okay, wh what quantifier do you use to use mutual information or trace distance? I mean, that I, 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 I didn't, we didn't look into this, but yeah, so it, it probably, the answer is it depends on what measure you take. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, okay, so guys. Yeah. Um, thank you for the talk. Uh, I think it's also a simple question. Could you go back to slide 14 real quick? Oh, 14. Um, so there, there's the marginal reducibility. And what I don't completely, oh, maybe it's actually slide 13 there. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so here, so you said, okay, for any delta, and that basically also, I think, implies that you could ex extract one copy of sigma. 
and then my question is like, if you then just then there exists some map that creates one copy of sigma, and then if you just reapply this map on multiple copies, could you then not just create multiple single copies of sigma that are completely uncorrelated, and therefore marginal reducibility implies normal reducibility? Uh, well, but uh, you wanted to uh, you wanted to uh, you want the transition to be with the rate one, right? So you. Uh, um, so you like you want like you have a million copies of row and you want uh, you want to have a state where like you you have like a million systems each each close to sigma. So I don't see how uh, yes, the rate would be much much worse. But uh, ah yeah with the with the with the yeah with the rate not yeah you probably could do this but with a different rate yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. But but anyway, if the state row is distillable, you can always distill uh, any sigma with uh, with some rate because. Uh, Rho is the syllables, so you can get singlets with some rate, right? Then you can convert them into anything you want, right? So if you are not interested in the specific rate, then you can convert into everything. Yeah, yeah. okay, thanks. Okay, let's talk to speaker again.